Hey, good morning YouTube. Good morning. Today is Saturday, August 15, 2015, and it's about 8.30 in the morning. I've already been up close to two hours. Uh, I was just relaxing, getting a glass of water, and, um, you know, taking care of my little dogs. Right now they're nice and quiet, and I'm happy about that. Um, wow, my, my mind is like um, really contemplative right now. Um, I feel like that I'm experiencing a lot of things internally. I, um, I guess I'm just trying to process, process it all. Um, I'd say the past few days I was just being busy, being busy. You know, going to appointments and uh, now trying to decorate my apartment just to um, keep my mind busy. It's like, you know when you have certain responsibilities you, you need to do but you don't want to do it? <laughs> so you do something else that's really not important but you do it because it makes you feel better. <laughs> and that was um, during my apartment. Well, um, Wow. I, um, I should know I'm on this spirit journey and um, really exploring this whole new paradigm shift the, uh, since um, December of last year. And um, wow. <laughs> I've been several things. I'm going to talk about different things. Um, one is on um, a, new um, a, a new paradigm regarding the earth. I came upon this video, could have been maybe two days ago, yes, two days ago. Um, the person's name, his name is Michael Boyland, I think the name, Boylan is spelled B-O-Y-L-A-N. And uh, he used to work for NASA. NASA, And um, he was hired by NASA, like, like a contractor. Um, he is a graphic artist. He, he, he paints. And NASA, NASA hired him to do some computer generated um, you know artwork and uh, you know if you google his name or YouTube his name you'll see these videos pop up on him and uh, he's actually very funny he does uh, also stand-up comedy regarding this uh, belief system he has um, I forget how exactly that he, it, it dawned on him what was going on, but in a nutshell with him, he, he realized that NASA was using his artwork and passing it off as reality, that um, like the earth, he did uh, things with the planetary systems, I think he said, and um, you know, and the like. And um, it, the, he 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 realized that, or at least he comes to the conclusion that the get this. <laughs> when I heard, I said, oh, brother, the, the, this my, my time on YouTube is really being stretched out a little bit too much. But he believes that the earth is flat. It sounds ridiculous, does it? I believe the earth is round. But there's a growing number of people that believe that the earth is flat. And it's a whole community of people that believe this. And he even, he, like, in his mockery about, you know, his time working for NASA, you know, during a stand-up comedy, he had uh, showed, like he had a, had like a, um, 
like a, a like a presentation shown on screen to the audience and you see a picture of one of the planets whatever and then they zoom away on the object guess what it was it was his t-shirt you know he's wearing a t-shirt in the 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 snapshot and the t-shirt had a had a a, a cut out disc that's placed against his t-shirt and so it wasn't even a planetary thing it was his t-shirt with a, a black uh, ring around his shirt I cracked up laughing so hard you know because you're looking at it up close you know when, when it did the zoom in that's what you initially see so yeah that's the that's one of the planets or something and then, and then they zoom away from him and it's his t-shirt with a and he had a ring on so he was trying to point out that not everything that you see is real and just like how he demonstrated that anyone could take a photo of something as he did himself of his t-shirt and pass it off as a uh, planet and then he showed pictures he said he asked the audience what is a photograph which one is a photograph and which one is a painting you know so again reality and um, there were many other videos that um, about the different like you have different airlines and that you cannot get direct flights from the southern hemisphere to other parts of the southern hemisphere and that they were showing things you know you you're able to see online the plane paths you know like like you like the, like they're like little like a, what do you call it the control towers how they can see different planes going well you have access to those things too evidently and at one point in the southern hemisphere that everything you know that the planes is 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 in it's it's not seen and then all of a sudden comes into view only at a certain point um on the screen so it's like a ghost figure you know you don't see anything and then it comes into view and this is happens throughout this summer southern hemisphere when you're looking at the plane paths and that the, that they say that they can't give a direct flight from let's say uh, Argentina to um, let's say Australia that they have to make all these different stops and everything and so he he, he and other people were suggesting that th there's a reason for it you know that the he's saying that the world is flat and they and that something about the Antarctica Antarctic I'm sorry um, that they don't allow individuals access to this to the South Pole and some people believe that beyond the ice that there's an ice ring in the southern hemisphere but if you go beyond the the, the ice um, barrier that is actually land and that is supposed to be mineral rich but either or um, I found it interesting because you start to wonder why certain places are off limits why they're only direct flights from certain countries to certain countries but not others and when I see this like saying oh those other countries aren't important they have to go through Europe and everything and you start to wonder but what's really cued you know cued me to do this video for today that really got me thinking was um, it was like an up close and personal video with this particular man Michael Boylan who used to work for NASA and he did all the artwork he 
he's in his home and he's talking, you know, someone is, you know, taking the video. And he said something that was very profound. He said about all his life he's been, you know, watching this screen, the big screen, you know, like television. And how his whole life was based on the screen. And then that screen was reality. And that he wasn't going outside and looking at the sky. You know, his window, he was saying. He has windows in his home, but he fails to, you know, in the past, to really look outside, hit the screen of his window. Really, he's, you know, he's trying to, you know, talk about the sky. That we're preoccupied with the screen, the flat screen at, in the home, and not the screen outside the window. And they make you think when you do go outside and look up in the sky that there's something wrong with you for entertaining the triviality of looking up at, at the sky. But they want you to spend hours looking at a screen, like I'm looking at a screen right now on my, my um, tablet. So that's what really got me thinking you know that sometimes I, I spend so much time on this flat screen in home and it's shaping my reality especially when I was a child I believe certain things about people situations places that I've never been or, been or seen but it's affecting me and it affects your attitude about everything and here you have true reality outside looking up at the sky and in this video with Michael Boylan he um, they, they show pictures of him outside pointing up at the sky and he was um, noticing chemtrails they had one even look like the um, the letter A you know um, it reminded me the, the the letter A um, in the occult circles. You know, they have like an A and then a circle around it, you know. And I said, wow. And uh, so here, you're so preoccupied with your screen at home, but yet there's a reality outside of possible um, chemtrails and everything, you know. So that's what really... Um, stuck out to me this uh, morning. I, I was just watching that one with the, you know, with Michael Boylan at home and, you know, sharing his thoughts about uh, reality. So, just imagine, you know, a, a reality and a, about the world. What if, wouldn't it be something uh, if the world were flat? and that they don't want you to go certain places. But say you ask yourself, well, why wouldn't they want you to go to certain places or the South Pole? It's always too cold. But so it is cold. You have places that are too hot, you know? But it, it, it's, it's control. And that's what's really the issue. Why are some people want to control others so much? Why do they want to control information, you know? So that was something that's important to me, that, that got me thinking. And there was another thing. Um, it's it's kind of, it's unrelated, but it's still shaping my reality. And, um, and I guess if anything happens that, you know, that it's, it's being documented. I have a new friend, and this this friend is a lawyer, and um, I I used to think that if you move up the social ladder, you have a position like like you're a doctor or a lawyer, right? That only good things can happen for you. Well, this friend of mine, um, she she's a, a self starter. Uh, very hard working and uh, 
has a lot of integrity in my, my opinion. And she shared with me an incident that happened this past Tuesday. But it was just yesterday that she really shared to me in depth what was going on. And it really got me thinking. I said, wow, people are willing to do these things. Well, what happened? She's uh, taken on a, a particular case. And uh, the case, if she wins, could uh, uh, win several million dollars. And um, this particular person, the, the defendant, has a, a history of, of swindling people. And um, this person coincidentally works in her building and I think on her floor also, it's like a suite of, I mean, di different uh, um, rooms, you know, suites. And m most of the people on that floor are all lawyers. And um, she's, she's leasing the two rooms on this floor. Well, she just... Um, she had just recently um, ex uh, accepted the case with these uh, plaintiffs. And guess what happened? The um, defendant, August 1st, decides to move in her, um, right next door to her, the, the, the office right next to her. She had just taken a case. And all of a sudden, he wants to move his office directly next to her. And then, someone, they had um, the, the building manager, you know, the, the, because she is like, in essence, subleasing the two offices, you know, they, they joined together. And, um, they had, um, I'm sorry, I'm distracted here, my little dog. They had, I'm sorry, come on, yeah. They, they, they locked her out of her office, the management, which is totally unlawful. They said, oh, well, you, you know, the, the, about the money, the, that, um, like, if the, if you don't, pay on, the, let's say, the first of the month, you know, what they do, you, you get a, a late fee, you know, so she has to pay a late fee, you know, um, but the building manager, uh, I mean, the office manager for the primary leaseholder um, did this to her without any warning, you know, and plus, she still has to pay the, the, the late fee. And, um, you know, it, it's totally illegal. You know, she, she has a lease. And uh, you can't just lock out somebody because they're a couple of days uh, late in paying uh, or office rent, whatever you, what you want to call it. And um, then it turns out that the, the door, something with the door is broken. They, uh, this is a law office, and they had entered, most likely entered her office without um, permission. They could have put a um, device in her room, you know, a listening device, and uh, anything they could have done. And the, the 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 people in the you know offices, they're from like the same country and everything. And um, I mean, that sounds very biased. But she, this this person, she's the only one that looks like her. She's a person of color. She's from Africa, and all the other people are from Europe. And. Um, also, there's only just one other female on the, the floor, on the, uh, fe female lawyer. All the others are male. 
so she stands out like a sore thumb and it's just the timing of everything here she had taken on a case and the defendant decides to move into the office next to her then it's a lockout you know and then you know hey what's going on so it it's 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 uh it looks like intimidation to intimidate her maybe to drop the case you know the 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 people involved um they're from uh Russia and um it looks it looks like they're trying to intimidate her to drop the case and um wow so this is uh um, a reality check for me here you could blow you know be in a so-called honorable profession and um, I mean people there may have may not have present you know brought the you know pay the rent on the first it's it's an office building people get billed and things like that you know and they had locked her out <clears throat> and she has a clients to bring in you know so they interfere with her making money so she could pay her rent, you know? It's unheard of. It's totally unheard of someone doing that. You have an office building, you know, and you have to follow protocols. Or at least, you know, you come to the person and, you know, uh, email them or whatever. Nothing like that was done. So I, su I suggested to my friend that she um, notified the authorities, you know, um, yeah, so I um, hope she notifies the correct um, agencies because, you know, it could be espionage, is, is that the term that when you break into a, a business and you, you spy or you, you know, or intimidation? You know, so this is really shaping my reality. That people um, could be could be watching her on the office. Now, also, I have to add regarding this office um, room next to her, it was occupied by another individual who has a lease on that uh, that that unit. So, how is it that? The defendant of the case that she's uh, ex uh, decided to take on just recently get in contact with this other man whose unit was right next door and then he the, this, the person that originally had that unit all of a sudden feels like he can't afford that that room and just moved to another room I, I'm not sure if it's on the same floor but it, the, allegedly a cheaper room you know that man who not occupies it would have to had contacted the other person for him to move so it looks like what it looks like it looks like that it's a um, that they all in on it in some form you know they again they're all from the same country they know each other similar belief system religions and they network and it reminds me of some things that happened to me in that when I was in the business world I, I used to work in a, um, the legal division um, of a, um, a financial uh, company a large one on the uh, financial district in Manhattan so it just really brought my mind back of some of the things that people do you know they even when I was in the that that business that someone had I shouldn't say they'd broken but they had acted they had the key and they broke in that way and went through uh, an individual's office and computer you know Wow, it was it was a big event, you know.
So that's what you know brought brought me back mentally regarding my, uh, my friend's office. So um, yeah, pe people are doing things, and uh, it could be like a, a network, and they um, cover for each other. So I feel it's just more of the urgency for her to let the authorities know and to let them know about um, the people switching offices, you know. I mean, I mean, not, not that they switch, I mean, they change offices. The, the two individuals, they, they didn't switch offices f of one another. They just one left an office and another one occupied it, you know. So why did the other person want to move? All of a sudden, he wants to move when she takes on the case, the law case. So, um, yeah. So that's all I want to share with you. I know they they seem really unrelated, but all these things shape your reality. It shapes your reality about the, the planet you live on. It shapes your reality about things that could happen on the job and that you think everything is... Um, normal but people could be um, examining what you're doing, eavesdropping, breaking in your office, maybe taking documents, intimidation to lock you out of your business office at a, a, in a, a, a law office suite. It's really something. So I'm just say, sharing this so that you all are aware also that um, having certain occupations do, do not uh, shield us from harm or intimidation. So I know I said a lot today and um, you know let me know what you think you know I know it might sound a little paranoid or whatever but um, you know this spirit journey is about examining different different things, different realities, different awarenesses, you know, even just beyond the so-called paranormal. It's all aspects of your life and reality. So again, feel free to comment below, to share this video, uh, and free to subscribe. And lastly, again, as I always say, you know, to give me the thumbs up. So peace to you guys. Bye-bye.